Hello, and welcome to the NCLA Government Resources Section's Help, I'm an Accidental Government Information Librarian webinar series. Today's webinar is called Navigating the Labyrinth of UN Documentation, an overview for people new to the world of UN documents. The presenters are Susan Gord, who is the Legal Librarian and Training Coordinator at the Dag Hammarskjöld Library, and Ramona Kors currently serves as the coordinator of the Outreach and Professional Development Unit of the Dag Hammarskjöld Library of the United Nations. Thank you very much. Basically, what I'm going to cover today is uh, the United Nations. I'm going to do a very brief overview for anyone who is not familiar with it. I tend to have a, um, a tendency to assume that people know the United Nations because I'm in it all the day, but I'm going to give you just a brief overview of that. Then we're going to talk about the different documents of the United Nations. So uh, the structure of document symbols, what they mean, that sort of thing, and then the different types of documents that you might see. Then I'm going to look specifically at the documents databases that are available and the documents tools and how to find and search within those databases to find those UN documents. Um, finally, I'm going to finish by talking about some additional resources when you're finding it difficult to find material within those UN documents um, and the services that the Dag Hammarskjöld Library offers you in case you, you need some assistance. Um, after that, I'm going to pass things over to my colleague Ramona, who's going to talk a little bit more about the um, Depository Library Program. Here is your very brief overview of the UN. There are six principal bodies to the UN. The General Assembly, that is the one that is represented by all 193 member states. It is considered the main deliberative and policy-making organ of the UN. Um, so you've got the General Assembly, that's the one that's got all 193 member states. You've got the Security Council, that is the one that is responsible for the maintenance of international peace and security. That one has the five permanent members of um, the UK, France, China, Russia, and uh, the US and then 10 non-permanent elected members. There's another um, or organ that's called uh, the Economic and Social Council. We call it ECOSOC. Um, and it deals with coordination on policy reviews and recommendations as it relates to economic and social and environmental issues. So a lot of things that relate to the SDGs or the Sustainable Development Goals tend to be discussed in ECOSOC. Uh, the Secretariat is the group that I belong to. This is really the administrative branch of the UN. It's the bureaucracy of the UN, if you will. Um, it carries out the day-to-day -day work of the UN, and that is the one that is headed by the Secretary General. The International Court of Justice sits in The Hague. It's considered the principal judicial organ of the United Nations, and it's mandated to set, settle legal disputes between states and to give advisory opinions on legal questions from the other UN organs. Uh, then there's the Trusteeship Council, which is dormant at this point. Um, it was established when the UN was established to provide international supervision to the 11 UN trust territories. And when all of the territories achieved self-government or independence in 1994, the trusteeship didn't really have a reason to meet anymore. So those are your principal organs. Underneath the principal organs, there's a bunch of subsidiary bodies. And then also there's what's considered the UN system. So the UN system is not just the UN. You've also got the UN funds and programs. So these are often financed by voluntary contributions. Examples of this would be something like UNICEF, UNDP, which is the UN Development Program, or UNEP, the UN Environmental Program. You've got specialized agencies, which are actually autonomous organizations working with the UN, but there's an, a, a negotiated agreement with the UN. So the ILO is an example of this, as is the FAO, the WHO, which is in the news a lot today these days, UNESCO, etc. Then there's other related organizations. There's a cooperation agreement between the UN and these um, organizations, but these agreements don't refer to the UN Charter specifically. So the IAEA is an example, or the World Trade Organization. The important thing to know when you're talking about the UN system and you're talking about these organizations specifically is that they have their own leadership, their own budget, and, their, and for the sake of this presentation, what's most important to know is their own documentation systems and databases. So if you are looking at a specialized agency, you really actually do want to go to the specialized agencies websites or databases to look at material that's there. I'm really going to be focusing on the UN itself. 
just to give you an idea, this is a chart of the UN system. You can find this on the UN website. It's at the very bottom of the UN homepage, just look for UN system chart. And it gives you an idea of the six principal bodies, which you can see on the side here. And then um, all of the subsidiary organs under these principal bodies and how these organs fit within the bigger United Nations system. So that's your, your very brief overview of the UN. Really what I want to emphasize is it's very large and it's very complex. Um, the documentation of the UN will provide insight into the actions of all of these bodies. So if you're looking for decisions of the UN, you'll find these in documents like resolutions or in presidential statements. Um, activities will be included, what the UN has been doing in certain things will be included in reports of the Secretary General or reports of the administrators of funds and programs, heads of specialized agency, and a lot of the subsidiary bodies will also have reports. Any negotiations that goes on between member states at the UN um, will often be included in meeting records, reports of subsidiary bodies. You'll also find voting information in there as well. Likewise, any positions that the member states have, you'll find in meeting records as they will reflect speeches that are given. Also, um, letters get circulated through the UN um, from member states, and those can often tell you what the positions of member states are. One of the things to know about UN documents, and it's like sort of the most essential information when you're looking for UN documents, is that every UN document is assigned a document symbol, and this is the easiest way to find a document symbol. So often when we're at the reference desk and we're answering questions, we'll ask people, do you have a document symbol? Because if you do, it's fairly easy to find it. Um, a document symbol basically is a combination of numbers and letters. It is a unique identifier for a UN document, and it's the same symbol across all six official languages of the UN. You'll see there, there's a link um, where you can find more information from our research guides. Um, so if you want more information about these document symbols, you can find that there. I'm gonna give you a brief summary of um, how these document symbols sort of uh, organize. Basically, the first component of a document symbol will tell you the principal organ. So those are those six principal organs of the UN. So you can see here, when you see an A, you're looking at a General Assembly document. An S is a Security Council document, ECOSOC is indicated with an E, and Secretariat is indicated with an ST. I like to say that the document symbols it's a little bit like a language is there's rules and then there's exceptions to the rules. So some of these bodies have special series symbols that don't reflect their parent organ. So the CRC or the Committee on the Rights of the Child is under actually the General Assembly, but the documents will start with CRC. And you can see, for instance, the United Nations Development Program is a DP, but the United Nations Environmental Program is UNEP. So you've got your first component, which will tell you that it, uh, the principal body, the second component will tell you within that principal body where you're looking. So something like AC would indicate that it's an ad hoc committee. Um, the General Assembly has six principal or standing permanent main committees, and those are indicated with a C1 through C6. You have commissions, conferences, sub, um, subcommissions, and working groups. So that's what the component is telling you there. So you can see AC1 is telling you that this is a General Assembly first committee document, and anything that starts with ECN9 is a Commission on Population and Development document that's coming out of ECOSOC. You've got special components as well. This will tell you basically the nature of the document, what kind of document you're looking at. When you see an L, this is, uh, stands for limited distribution. What this means is that it's generally a draft document and generally it's a draft resolution. Sometimes it's a draft report though. You see PRST indicates that it's a statement by the president. RES would indicate that it's a resolution. And then if you see a PV or an SR, that would indicate that it's a verbatim record or a summary record. So it's meetings, basically. So you can see what happens, basically, is the document, all of those components go together to get you your document symbol. So this, for example, is a General Assembly document from the first committee. For the General Assembly, it will tell you which session you're looking at. So that's what the 60 indicates. The PV indicates it's a meeting record, and one indicates the first meeting record. So if I wanted to look at the second meeting record, I just changed the PV1 to PV2. 
Finally, there's a component that indicates whether there's been modification to the original text. That would be indicated with an add, which is an addendum, which means that more information has been added. Um, an amendment is indicated with amend. A core agendum, where there's a correction that's been made, um, and this may not be applying to all the different language versions, is indicated with a COR. And then revision is indicated with an uh, REV. When there's a revision, it's completely replacing the, the previous text, but the addendums, the amendments, and core agendums are supplemental to the original text. So if, for instance, you have a draft resolution, maybe in an addendum, other member states add their names as sponsors, and so it would be an addendum to that. Maybe they change the language of something and it becomes an amendment. So you have to look at the original document plus the amendment. But when it's a revision, you have to look at the, the, new, the new document. So that's basically the document symbols. When you have all those document symbols uh, together, you get your document symbol. Um, talking about the types of documents, uh, there's sort of some main types of documents that I'm going to go into a little bit more detail with. Um, I'm going to talk about resolutions, meeting records, reports, and letters. Once again, there's a link here in the presentation that goes back to our UN documentation research guides that talks about the different types of UN documents. So resolutions, these are what are considered formal expressions of the opinion or the will of the United Nations organs. Um, they are issued as individual documents and you'll see the pattern is different depending on which body you're talking about, but they always have that RES in it to indicate that you're looking at a resolution. So depending on the body, it will follow somewhat different patterns, but you know that the RES is there. Um, decisions are not actually documents, but there are decisions that are made at the UN that are for um, formal actions that deal with non-substantive or routine matters. So things like elections, appointments, taking notes of reports, those can all be decisions that are not um, substantive, not about a particular subject, but just about the functioning of a particular UN organ. These are not issued as separate documents, but where you can find them is in this compilations. So um, the principal organs, the General Assembly, the Security Council, ECOSOC, um, will have compilation volumes that will tell you the text of resolutions and related information, as well as the text of decisions. When you're looking at some of the subsidiary bodies, um, those resolutions might be contained within the sessional reports that they report to the principal organs. So once again, there's a link there with more information about those. Meeting records. Meeting records will contain statements and speeches and any actions taken. And by actions taken, I mean things like decisions, um, adopting a resolution, voting, all of that will be reflected in the meeting records themselves. There are two different types of meeting records. You've got your verbatim meeting records, which is a full first person account of a proceeding of a meeting. So you can see for here, it, in this example here, it's using I in the term. So basically it's being recorded what is being said um, exactly by the Deputy Secretary General. And that is reflected in the meeting records. Summary records, on the other hand, are third person condensed versions of the proceedings of the meetings, and that's indicated with SR. And you can see here, for example, Mr. Wada from Japan, they're talking about his and he. So the, it, this is being um, reported and um, changed there. It's condensed version of the proceedings of the meetings, but it's actually quite detailed. So meetings will have either um, PVs or SRs, but meeting records just generally um, will be indicated with either a PV or an SR. Other types of documents that you might see include sessional reports. So all the subsidiary bodies will submit reports to their parent organs. So if you think back to that chart that I showed at the beginning that showed the UN system, if you were doing UN research, and you were looking at the work of a particular, um, let's say the um, uh, Commission on Population and Development. That is a subsidiary body of ECOSOC, so it will submit a report to ECOSOC. 
These reports are usually supplements to the official records of the parent organs. Contained within these reports might be resolutions and decisions that are adopted by that body, summary of discussions that that body held, and possibly draft resolutions that the subsidiary body recommends the parent organ adopt. So an example I like to use is the International Law Commission meets in Geneva in the spring and in the summer. It reports to the General Assembly for the General Assembly to potentially adopt um, some resolutions that it has worked on. The thing to know about sessional reports that makes them a little bit more difficult to find is that there's no distinguishing symbol element. They're considered part of what's a general series, which means they've just been given um, a document symbol that will tell you, for instance, that it's a general assembly and it's a particular session, but you won't know that it's a sessional report. When we get into the databases itself, I'll show you that there's a way that, that you can search for these types of documents without knowing the document symbol. There's also reports. These are another part of those general series documents, reports of the Secretary General. So usually in resolutions that the UN bodies will put forward, it will ask the Secretary General to submit reports back to them on certain topics. These topics can be a wide variety of things. So the Secretary General will report on what's going on with peacekeeping operations, on political situations, on some very technical subjects, legal topics, really anything that the UN deals with, if within that resolution they ask for the Secretary General to report on it, the Secretary will report on it and submit that document to the body to examine. Another type of documents that you might see sometimes are letters. So letters may come from member states, they may come from the Secretary General, from presiding officers of UN organs and subsidiary bodies, and they might be addressed to the Secretary General or to the President of the Security Council or the chair of a particular body. And contained within these letters, you might find reports, statements, or outcome documents of a regional group meeting, of subsidiary bodies, that sort of thing here. Um, the letters need to be transmitted as UN documents to get a UN document symbol to be able to find this. Once again, no distinguishing symbol element to know that you're looking at a letter. They are part of the general series. So that's sort of an overview and a background of looking for these kinds of documents. Now I'm sort of going to give you much more practical advice about how you find them. So this is probably the most useful piece of information I think I give. When you're looking for a UN document and you have a UN document symbol, just add that document symbol after http undocs.org slash and then your document symbol. This is a stable link, so you can use this as a stable link. Why we say to double check against the official document system or the ODS is because the ODS will allow you to check to see if there's any modification to the text, any addenda, any amendments, revisions, core agenda, that sort of information. The, the ODS will allow you to, to see if that's been done. Um, you can also find that in the UN Digital Library, which is what I'm really gonna focus on. The other reason that you might wanna check against the official document system is because not all UN documents are available digitally. And so if you get an error message when you do undocs.org, it is very possible that the document is not actually available in electronic format. So the official document system is called ODS. You can find it at documents.un.org. It started in 1994. And what you need to know is that from 1994 onwards, you should be able to find all UN documents. So if you are looking for a document that is from 1994 onwards, you can find it in the UN docs, um, sorry, in documents.org or in the uh, official document system, ODS. This is when, so the ODS started in 1994 and that's when the documents were born digital. Um, at certain points, uh, the UN decided to digitize particular parts of UN documents. So they had projects in which they did digitization of certain types of documents. So all of the, doc all of the resolutions from 1946 onwards has been digitized, all of the Security Council plenary meetings, meeting records of the General Assembly, um, supplements to General Assembly official records. Um, there's a number of projects and sort of um, um, units of documents that have been digitized. Um, 
The other thing to note is that we also digitize documents on an ad hoc basis. We've been doing this for about 20 years now. Um, so older documents are being scanned and made available in the ODS. So really, when you're looking at what is available online when it comes to UN documents from 1994 onwards, you should be able to find everything. Previous to 1994, it's going to be hit or miss. So you can check. You might be able to find it. There's a lot of documents that are out there, but if you don't find it and it predates 1994, it could be because it's not digitized. If that is the case, you can contact us in the library um, and say you're looking for a particular document. We would verify that it's not been digitized and we would put it into that um, request system for the ad hoc digitization project. I'm not really going to focus on the ODS. I'm going to focus on the digital library. And the reason that I'm focusing on the digital library is because this is one access point for UN material, including UN documents. The coverage is very similar to what you get in the ODS, but this one has greater search functionality thanks to the UN library indexing. So if you don't have the UN document symbol, but you know what kind of document you are looking for, you are able to find that through the digital library. It's the one that we use the most frequently. Um, and if you are familiar with UNBISNET, the UN Digital Library replaces UNBISNET. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how you would use the digital library here. In terms of content, it's similar content to the ODS in terms of UN documents. All of the things I mentioned before about what's in the ODS you would find in the digital library. It's also got similar content to the UN iLibrary in terms of the freely accessible UN publications. So the UN publications that are freely accessible, you will find some of them in the digital library. The information or the content that is unique to the UN digital library um, is citations to documents. So the library started indexing documents back in 1979, which means that um, sometimes you're able to find a reference to a document, if not the electronic version of the document through the UN Digital Library, starting in 1979. The other thing that you can find in the UN Digital Library, we have a specialized database for voting data. So if you want to know how member states voted on an adopted resolution, you could find that information. There's an index to speeches. If you're looking for how member states spoke on a particular topic, you can find that information there. Um, there's maps in the UN Digital Library. And as I've said down here, if you go to the UN Digital Library itself, there's a help section that will give you more information about the scope of the collection. So when you're on the Digital Library itself, um, there's a simple search where you can enter keywords, click on search. The thing to know when you're doing a simple search in the digital library, and don't worry, I will be showing you screenshots of the, what this looks like in a bit. Um, it is searching the description of the resources, searching the metadata of the document. So all the information that the library puts in, the title, the subject, summary of the document, author, that sort of information is there. Um, it's searching only in English, and it's not searching the full text uh, initially, though you can turn the full text searching on. It searches all types of records. So bibliographic would be UN documents or UN publications, but it's also searching the voting and the speeches database at the same time. You have options to refine the search um, once you get to the results thing. So this is what the homepage would look like. You can see here if you type in multilingualism and you click on search, you'll then get the option to limit by type of material. So as I mentioned earlier, letters and note verbals, which are basically like letters, there's no unique document symbol attached to them, but the digital library will allow you to say, I'm looking specifically for letters, or I'm looking specifically for reports. And then you can say which body you wanna look at, so the General Assembly, the Security Council, and then you can filter by year as well. So when you look at it here, um, depending on how your browser is showing, you will either find these facets under the options here or on the side here under resource type. 
Um, so it depends how large the text is appearing in your browser, but it will be in one of these two places. And then you're able to um, facet by the types of documents, the body, and the year. One of the things we recommend with the digital library, the default sorting is relevance sorting. Um, so we actually recommend that you go under the options here and choose year descending as your um, search thing to get the most recent results at the top. Um, so often when people are looking for a particular report, they want the most recent one. If you, if you leave it the way it is, the relevant search, you're going to get sort of older documents probably at the top. So you want to do that trick there. There is also an advanced search. Um, so if you look at the home page of the digital library, you'll see that under the, the, the simple search, there's the option for an advanced search. The advanced search allows you to search by different uh, fields. So you can search by title or by subject or by author. So if you were looking, for instance, for reports of the Secretary General, in this field here, you would type in Secretary General. Little hint, the dash makes a big difference. So you do want to type in Secretary dash General, not Secretary General as two different words. When you're searching for a phrase, we recommend you use this partial phrase thing here um, to search for that. In the um, simple search, you can use quotes. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the operators in a bit. If you want to do full text searching, um, you can run your initial search and then turn the full text search on in the results screen. You can also do a full text search from the advanced screen. It's one of the options in the drop down menu. You can do your full text search in any language, any of the official languages that the document is available. So you can only search the metadata or the description in English, but you can search the other, um, you can do a full text search in all the, all the languages. Here's an example of doing a full text search. You can see here, I've put sustaining piece in quotes. The full text search is off and I'm getting 17 results. The reason I'm getting 17 results is because it is searching for that phrase within the description of the document. When I turn the full text search on, you can see then I'm getting 441 results. So my search is actually searching within the UN document. The quotation marks also make a difference. So you can see here when I put it in quotes, I get 441 results because I'm searching for that phrase. But if I don't put it in quotes, you can see here I get 1,907 results. So when you're in the simple search, put things in quotes. When you're in the advanced search, use partial phrase. The UN Digital Library also has voting information. Uh, when you're looking for voting information, um, you can find the recorded votes of all resolutions that have been adopted by the General Assembly and the Security Council. You can search by resolution symbol. You can search by keyword. So to go to the voting database, you can either do a simple search in the UN Digital Library and then filter by voting records, or you can go straight into the voting records database. When you go into the voting records database, the advanced search and the faceting is different, and it's the same for speeches. I'm happy to show examples um, at the end of this session or to explain things in more detail. I'm just trying to get through things right now, but. Um, Trust me, I'm, I am, I'm delighted to do things uh, later on. So that's the voting records database. For the speeches database, this is how you can find contained within those meeting records, you can look for speeches made in those meeting records. So depending on the body, this is constantly being updated, but the last time I checked, um, from 1983 onwards for the General Assembly, um, basically the library goes through these documents, finds out, who spoke, what they spoke on. So you're actually able to say, okay, I want speeches by, for example, France on disarmament in the Security Council, and you're able to find that there. You can also search by speaker, by document symbol, or by topic. So same thing with the speeches. There is a collection that's over here that you can go into specifically, and then you have a different um, drop-down menu or you have a um, different uh, faceting on the side. Uh, 
The other thing, as I said, you can do these searches when you do a, a simple search. So say, for example, I search for multilingualism in the simple search. I can then look at voting data. I can select voting data or I can select speeches. So I can also do it from the basic search and then just narrow to voting data or speeches. It's depending on how I want to search for things. So just so you know, here are some things to know about searching the digital library. It's got Boolean operators and or not. The asterisk as, acts as a truncation. This one can be quite important. Um, just as an example, Syria in the indexing is actually Syrian Arab Republic. Russia is actually the Russian Federation. Um, and so if you don't put the asterisk there to indicate that you're looking for Syrian, you might not get the results for the Syrian Arab Republic. So if you find that your results are not as much as you would expect them to be, if you put in an asterisk, you might get more results and more relevant results that way. The digital library actually has a lot of expert searching in there that allows you to do some very precise searching on the metadata. Um, we rarely go into the expert searching itself, but um, sometimes some of the questions that we get from researchers are um, things that we need to go into the expert searching for um, so that you can um, do some searching there. So if you go into the help guide, it will explain how you can do expert searching based on the metadata that is there. Basically, with the UN, one of the things I really suggest is that you be creative and be patient. Um, it is not necessarily an easy thing to search, but, you know, it just sort of do, do your own reference interview. Think about what part of the UN are you, re, are you researching? How does it fit into the UN at large? Who does it report to? Are you looking for a publication or are you looking for a UN document? What types of documents would you find information in? So for instance, voting would be included in a meeting record, so would a speech. Um, so, or if you're looking to see decisions that are made, you might wanna look in a report. So all of these things will help you determine which tool to use and what strategy to use. There's a number of good sources and tools that are produced by the UN and by the Daghammer School Library that are helpful in starting your research. So I'm going to talk about those um, right now. So one of the ones I'm going to point out. Is this, do you want to, there's a few questions about searching. Sure. Do you do yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Go um, for it. So Anne was asking um, if you could address the difference between freely available UN documents and the sales publications. Yeah, so that has to do, there's some sales publications that um, are, they're sort of um, with sales in marketing within the UN, they are for sale and they're available through the UN iLibrary. Now, not all of these publications are available, like some of them are freely available and those ones are in the digital library. So the, um, there's, there's sort of two different mandates that are going on, but that's the UN iLibrary will have the sales publications that we cannot make available through the UN digital library. Okay, great. And I think that might answer the, so Chad was saying that um, they are, the publication, sales publications are not assigned symbols. It is local, is it yeah. a local decision to how to classify these? Okay. Yeah, so the difference between publications and um, and UN documents in terms of those symbols is that basically um, some documents are both sales documents and UN publication or UN documents. Um, so the publications will have a, a sales um, reference number that is like, it will start with, I don't know, I, I know it when I see it. Um, but if it's got a UN document symbol, it means that it's been considered by or is being issued by one of the principal organs for the work of the principal organs. Publications are intended for the general public and, and they get those sales publication numbers. Okay, great. Um, is everything in the, this is Jeremy, is everything in the digital library fully text, full text indexed? And there are resolutions, are there, re there are resolutions voted down that don't, have a recorded vote in the digital, digital library. Okay, so is everything in the digital library full text searchable? Um, mm -hmm. it, it should be, but I always sort of, I, I tell people to sort of work with caution because it sort of, um, it depends. I think at the digital library, 
it's searching the PDF of the document. So I think it's okay with the ODS. Um, it is searching, it depends on when the document was digitized and how it was digitized. Um, it also depends if the document is available. Sometimes it might only be available in one language. Um, so generally speaking, yes, everything is searchable in the digital library with a few caveats. Okay. Um, and then there's a question about resolutions voted down that don't have a recorded vote. Yeah, so for resolutions that are voted down, they aren't contained within the voting database. If I search in the um, general keyword search there and search for not adopted in quotes, and then look at draft resolutions, we, in uh, as far as the Security Council has gone, we have gone backwards in time and we have marked all of the draft resolutions that have not been adopted, whether because of a veto or because of a lack of um, um, sufficient votes. So you can search for it with the not adopted. Once you find that, you can find the draft resolutions. It, I think it tells you what the summary of the vote, and then you can look at the meeting record to find out how the member states voted in each of these cases. There's also a vetoes table in our research guide that will tell you when um, permanent members have used a veto. Uh, does the UN Digital Library include UNBIS, the, the, the source terms in record metadata? Ah, um, yeah, so the thesaurus and the metadata, I, we're working on getting that through there. Um, I, I don't know enough about that to really be able to answer, but um, um, I know it's a project that's being worked on right now. So if um, if you want to give me a um, person to contact, I can follow up on that one. Okay, yeah. And, the, and we'll give contact information at the mm -hmm. end if anybody's yeah, yeah. wanting to. Um, good background documents about countries. Do, are there such things as those? I know there's the there's a guide to the different documents from individual countries. I've seen that before. Right. So there is something that we have. So what we tend to do as the background for individual countries is how it relates to the UN. So we have a UN member states on the record, which will tell you when mm -hmm. the member states join the UN, um, what their positions have been on things that will do searches on that. Um, for backgrounds on countries, uh, I think you're better off going potentially somewhere else than the UN because it will be very reflective on the work of the UN. There's a question about UN content versus Redex access. I don't know if she, if Susan will necessarily, would you feel able to answer that? Yeah, okay. what <laughs> I will, I mean, not really. What I will say is that we are able to do it without having access to that database. So we can find what we want um, without it. So using the digital library, using the ODS, using the yearbook and the index to proceedings here. Um, usually we're able to find information that we're looking for. The key is to know that when you're looking pre-1994, you maybe want to look at things like the UN yearbook to see what it says or the indexes to proceedings. Um, those are going to be um, actually pre-1979 because 1979 is when the documents started getting indexed in the UN, um, in the UNBISNAP. We don't need it, is my answer, but okay. you know, if it's something that, that you like and you want to use, go ahead and use it. <laughs> and if you want to do a webinar on the difference, <laughs> we have done stuff like that before and I would love to see that. I'm talking about um, some sources that we use when we're doing UN research. I actually recently used the UN yearbook. It's a really great source. Um, coverage starts in 1946. All of the volumes, I think I, when I looked last, I think it's up to 2014 that is available um, the, of the UN yearbooks. This would be an example of a publication, but it is freely accessible and online. You're able to search the full text and it will tell you the activities of the UN system at large. It will tell you the activities um, that were going on under peace and security, what was going on in the secretariat, all sorts of stuff. I've used this. Then you can find references that will tell you UN document symbols. Then you can try to find those documents. If they're not available in the databases, you can contact us to get them digitized. It's a really great source, um, especially when you're doing historic research. Um, it's very detailed about the work of the UN. Likewise, there's the index to proceedings, the indexes to proceedings. Those are available on the library website. They're an annual publication. 
and they're a guide to the proceedings and the documentation of the major organs. They um, also go back all the way to 1946. There is a subject index and an index to speeches. And it will basically tell you under a particular subject, these are all the documents that you wanna look at for that. Um, so both of those sources can be really great sources when you're, when you're not dealing with the database itself, but you're trying to do research on the UN. Another one I want to point out is um, under the library website, you might be familiar with this library website here. If you go under uh, find databases, then all subjects. And then here, if you go UN databases under all resources, you select UN databases. Um, the UN system is quite large and uh, a number of bodies will produce databases. When we see specialized databases, say for example, coming from the FAO or coming from the ILO um, that are on topics that those particular bodies focus on, we will add it to our list of UN databases. For example, I work with the law stuff um, under this UN databases. You'll see like the treaties database, the um, audiovisual library of international law, um, lots of great resources that are under there. When we see new ones, we add them to this A to Z list and you can find the UN databases there. Those are all freely available from our databases list. We have a bunch of research guides. If you look here under UN documentation, so you can find this at research.un.org. Under doc UN documentation here, you've got overview of UN documents and how to find UN documents here. These are sort of your introduction to UN documentation. Just gonna point out when I was doing, when I did a screenshot of this, up popped our little chat reference service. So this is something that we implemented in the summer of last year, it is quite popular. Feel free to chat with us when it's available. You'll see that little box come up <clears throat> and you can ask us questions through chat. Under the UN documentation research guides here, by body, you have all of the different, the six different principal bodies as well as a research guide um, of the UN system. Under by subject, you have things like development, decolonization, um, all those sort of things that will point out the key documents and the way particular topics have evolved over time in the UN system. So you can see that there. And then under quick links for full text, this is where you'll find our table of GA resolutions, um, our meetings records for the Security Council, and that's where I mentioned before the vetoes table that will tell you all the times that um, different uh, Security Council, the five permanent members have used a veto on what draft resolution and the meeting records there. So those tables are quite handy and you can find that under quick links to full text. We also, as I said, have this feature that is Ask DAG. Um, so if you are familiar with SpringShare, this is this, the research guides, Ask DAG and the, and the LibChat, those are all um, SpringShare products. Under Ask DAG, you find our different FAQs. So you can either search for a question that you're looking for, just click on uh, Ask DAG and see if you can find the answer in our FAQ database, or you can submit it here. And when it says, still haven't found what you're looking for, submit your question. So we do respond to questions um, from uh, researchers outside of the UN. Um, if you put it in this way, it goes to us in our ticketing system, and we get those questions there or you can talk to us through chat. So by all means, if you're finding that you um, are a little bit um, stuck finding something or you're looking for something in particular, please do reach out to us. We are happy to answer questions either through the chat or through the ticketing system. <clears throat> 